If you don't pay a magistrate's court fine, the court service will send bailiffs. It is this type of debt that bailiffs exaggerate their enforcement powers, in particular, saying they can arrest debtors and take them into custody. But in 2009, after a bailiff positioned himself face to face with a debtor on the doorstep, the bailiff was headbutted and knocked unconscious. The bailiff's accomplice, waiting in a van nearby, called the police, and within minutes, nearly a dozen police arrived and arrested the debtor. The subsequent prosecution against the debtor failed because he lawfully acted in self-defense. The court heard the debtor had remained calm and relaxed at all times the bailiff was on the property, and after the police had made the arrest. Also, private bailiff companies cannot make arrests or detain prisoners. Bailiffs, or enforcement agents, collecting unpaid court fines on behalf of the court service, are only authorized to take control of goods to recover a debt. Bailiff companies are only insured to transport goods in the van. They cannot transport prisoners. Parliament introduced the Crime and Courts Act 2013 which restricted bailiffs' powers, and specifically removed the bailiffs' right to use force against people. In this video, we show you what steps you can legally take to stop a magistrate's court fines bailiff, and what you can do if a bailiff is dishonestly misrepresenting his powers. There are a number of ways you can stop a court fines bailiff. They are Make a statutory declaration Pay the fine into court online, and give the bailiff a notice. Get your financial circumstances means tested. Do a change of circumstances. Ask for more time to pay. You are a vulnerable person. Appeal the fine. Commute the fine to unpaid work. Ask for an attachment of benefits. Ask for a committal order. Run an online enforcement compliance check, or do nothing. Make a statutory declaration. Section 14 of the Magistrates' Courts Act, 1980, says Proceedings invalid where accused did not know of them. Where a summons has been issued under Section 1 above and a magistrate's court has begun to try the information to which the summons relates, then, if the accused, at any time during or after the trial, makes a statutory declaration that he did not know of the summons or the proceedings until a date specified in the declaration, being a date after the court has begun to try the information, and, within 21 days of that date the declaration is served on the designated officer for the court, without prejudice to the validity of the information, the summons and all subsequent proceedings shall be void. That means, if you did not know that you had been convicted or fined, until a bailiff contacted you, then you can make a statutory declaration, and that will revoke the conviction and the fine. The law also says, the statutory declaration is without prejudice to the validity of the information, which means the court may summon you again to answer the charge. But, for now, the bailiffs and the fees are off your back. Any solicitor can make a statutory declaration for you, but they are very expensive. They know they are getting you off the court fine, the bailiffs coming round and getting you off the hook for the bailiffs £310 enforcement fees. So, they will charge you about £150, plus, they rarely offer a same-day service. Dealing with bailiffs.co.uk offers a low-cost service for as little as £15 and you can download it straight away, and you can get it sworn in for free at any county court. When the sworn statutory declaration is given to the fines officer at the magistrate's court, the proceedings and the fine are invalid. You don't need to tell the bailiff company. The court service will withdraw the warrant under Section 88, 8, of the Legal Aid, Sentencing and Punishment of Offenders Act 2012. Pay the fine into court online, and give the bailiff a notice. When you pay the court fine before a bailiff attends, then the enforcement power ceases to be exercisable. The law is paragraph 6.3 of Schedule 12 of the Tribunal's Courts and Enforcement Act 2007, which says, The property in all goods ceases to be bound when the amount outstanding is paid. That means, there is no longer an enforcement power, but that does not mean you are off the hook for the £310 bailiff's fees. It only means the bailiff cannot take an enforcement step in respect of them. You may get a letter from the court service, 
saying that the money you paid online has been given to a bailiff company. However, there is no provision that enables court service to give public money to a private company in this way. Nor does it revive the enforcement power. The court service is merely trying to protect the financial interests of the bailiff company. If the bailiff threatens you with an enforcement step, then you can apply for what is called a detailed assessment under Civil Procedure Rule 84.16. The court will look at whether the bailiff was entitled to make a demand for their fees, and if you can show evidence you paid the court fine on a date before the bailiff turned up, then the bailiff pays your costs. Get your financial circumstances means tested. If a court find you without determining your financial means, ask the court to withdraw the warrant, which ceases the enforcement power and ask to be means tested. The court can set a smaller amount or decide not to fine you at all. Section 164 of the Criminal Justice Act 2003 says. Fixing of fines. Before fixing the amount of any fine to be imposed on an offender who is an individual, a court must inquire into his financial circumstances. Download and complete a means test form MC100 from the court service website, and send it to the sentencing court and give the bailiff company a notice. The law then says the court will complete a means inquiry to see if you can afford to pay the fine. Section 165, 2, of the Criminal Justice Act 2003, says. If, on subsequently inquiring into the offender's financial circumstances, the court is satisfied that had it had the results of that inquiry when sentencing the offender it would have fixed a smaller amount, or, not have fined him. After you have applied to be means tested, give the bailiff a notice. It can be a text message to the bailiff's phone, telling him that you have applied to the court to be means tested. Then, make a screenshot of the sent text message to record the time you gave the bailiff the notice. If the bailiff replies to your text message, then make a screenshot of that as well, and add the screenshots to your file. Do a change of circumstances. If you have a change of circumstances since you were fined, then you can ask the court to withdraw the warrant of control while considering your change of circumstances. When the warrant has been withdrawn, then the enforcement power ceases to be exercisable and the bailiff cannot recover any fees and charges. Section 85 of the Magistrates Courts Act 1980 says Power to remit fine. Where a fine has been imposed on conviction of an offender by a magistrate's court, the court may at any time remit the whole or any part of the fine, but only if it thinks it just to do so having regard to a change of circumstances which has occurred, where the court is considering whether to issue a warrant of commitment after the issue of such a warrant in respect of the fine has been postponed under subsection. 2 of section 77 above, since the relevant time is defined in subsection 4 of that section, and in any other case, since the date of the conviction. Download and complete a form MC100 from the court service website. After you have sent the completed form MC100 to the sentencing court, send a text to the bailiff on his mobile telling him that you have applied to the court to do a change of circumstances. Make a screenshot of the sent text message to record the time the notice was given. If the bailiff replies to your text message, make a screenshot of that as well, and keep all screenshots for your file. Ask for more time to pay. The law says you can ask the court for more time to pay. Section 24 subparagraph 1 of the Courts Act 2003 says. A power to vary the payment terms of a collection order includes power to substitute terms requiring the defendant to pay by specified installments on or before specified dates for a term requiring the defendant to pay within a specified period, or substitute a term requiring the defendant to pay within a specified period for terms requiring the defendant to pay the sum due by specified installments on or before specified dates. Ask the court to withdraw the warrant of control while the fines officer processes your form MC100 and that stops the enforcement power. When the enforcement power ends, the bailiff may not recover any fees and charges. Regulation 17, 1, of the Taking Control of Goods, Fees, Regulations, 2014, says. Fees and disbursements not recoverable where enforcement process ceases. The enforcement agent may not recover fees or disbursements from the debtor in relation to any stage of enforcement undertaken at a time when the relevant enforcement power has ceased to be exercisable. 
you are a vulnerable person. Bailiffs must give vulnerable debtors adequate opportunity to get assistance and advice before removing goods, otherwise the enforcement stage fees are not recoverable. Guidelines, published by the Ministry of Justice gives the classes of vulnerable people for the purpose of civil enforcement. It says you are a vulnerable person for the purpose of civil enforcement, if you are Elderly Have a disability Seriously ill Recently bereaved A single parent Pregnant Unemployed, or Have difficulty in understanding English Get the enforcement put on hold so you have the opportunity to get assistance and advice in relation to the exercise of the enforcement power. You should give this notice by email and by post to the bailiff company and to the sentencing magistrate's court. Make a screenshot of the sent email and get a certificate of posting from the post office. You can download a template from dealingwithbailiffs.co.uk. Appeal the fine. The law says you can appeal a court fine. Section 108 of the Magistrates' Courts Act 1980, says Right of appeal to the Crown Court A person convicted by a Magistrates' Court may appeal to the Crown Court, if he pleaded guilty, against his sentence, or, if he did not, against the conviction or sentence. Apply to the Magistrates' Court to withdraw the warrant of control, which stops the enforcement power until the Crown Court has determined your appeal. The enforcement power ceases to be exercisable, and the bailiff cannot charge you any fees. Commute the fine to unpaid work. If the enforcement of the fine is likely to be impractical or inappropriate, then you can ask the fines officer to make a work order and withdraw the warrant of control from the bailiffs. A work order is an order to do unpaid work to discharge an unpaid fine. Paragraph 2 of Schedule 6 of the Courts Act 2003, says The relevant court may, on the application of a fines officer or of its own motion, make an order under this schedule, a work order, where it appears to the court that in view of the defendant's financial circumstances all the following methods of enforcing payment of the relevant sum are likely to be impracticable or inappropriate. A warrant of control under Section 76 of the 1980 Act. Download and complete a means test form MC100 from the court service website, and send it to the sentencing court, then give the bailiff a notice. The notice can be given by text message, and make a screenshot of the sent text message to record the time it was given. If the bailiff replies to your text message, then make a screenshot of that as well for your file. Ask for an attachment of benefits. If you are not working, or on a low income, then go online and apply for universal credit. You can then ask the court for an attachment of benefits to pay your fine. Paragraph 9 subparagraph 2, of Schedule 5 of the Courts Act 2003, says. The court may make an attachment of earnings order, or, an application for benefit deductions, if the defendant consents. Download and complete a Form MC100 from the court service website, and send it to the fines officer at the sentencing magistrate's court. Never give a Form MC100 to a bailiff company, they are unauthorized to means test defendants. The court should withdraw the warrant, and the bailiffs will not visit you, and you will not need to pay their £310 fees. Ask for a committal order. If you are homeless, and need to get to the top of the social housing list, then being released from custody will fast-track you there. Magistrates know that defendants default on their fines to get on the housing list, so you may need to be persistent, and in any case, magistrates know that you become a burden on the taxpayer, and court service trains their magistrates to act in the public interest. Run an online enforcement compliance check. Dealing with bailiffs.co.uk, has a free online enforcement compliance check. If there is an enforcement impropriety, then it will show you what steps you can take to stop the bailiffs. The help you get from dealing with bailiffs is not available from any official advice outlet. It is dedicated specifically to stopping bailiffs, and works on your side. We offer a telephone helpline to provide you with the remedies available to you, and we can even refer you to specialist solicitors to recover damages from the bailiff or his company. Do nothing. If you ignore a bailiff collecting a court fine, then he will threaten you with a locksmith, and will put red letters through your door. 
it was a fad for bailiffs collecting unpaid court fines to threaten debtors with breaking entry using a locksmith. The practice was even exercised by several bailiffs, but the claim for damage to property made the cost of this type of enforcement financially uneconomical. Enforcement regulations have never enabled bailiffs to break open private homes with a locksmith, unless executing an eviction order. So, bailiffs interpret the words, reasonable force, to mean, getting a locksmith to break open a property. In any case, bailiffs cannot use force against people. Bailiffs work for the court service under an agreement called the Enforcement Services Contract. It states the bailiff must recover the court fine within 90 days after being instructed, and the bailiff may ask for a further 90 days if he can show there is a reasonable prospect of recovering the fine. If the bailiff cannot recover the fine, the case is returned to the sentencing court. The notice of enforcement specifies a date it was issued as shown here. The enforcement power continues for a period of 12 months following the date of issue. Regulation 9 of the Taking Control of Goods Regulations 2013, says. Time limit for taking control of goods. The enforcement agent may not take control of goods of the debtor after the expiry of a period of 12 months beginning with the date of notice of enforcement. If the bailiff wants to continue enforcement after the 12 months has expired, then he must give a new notice of enforcement. Otherwise, the court service will place the unpaid fine with a department called the Historic Debts Team. The court service set up the Historic Debts Team in 2016 to locate people who have unpaid court fines and get them to pay. It is a last throw of the dice policy to try and recover old unpaid court fines. A court fine never becomes statute barred under the Limitation Act 1980, because it is not really a debt. It is a penalty. Bailiffs recovering historic court fines will try and trace missing debtors by putting phishing documents into a list of addresses they think the debtor is staying. This is to see if the document gets a reaction, and the debtor calls the bailiff's number on the document, and therefore shows that the debtor is staying at the targeted address. Some bailiffs might even send spam text messages, but only if they can get the debtor's mobile number from the DVLA, because the V5 logbook new keeper slip asks the new keeper of a vehicle to give a mobile number. If you have learned something new, then why not share this video? Dealingwithbailiffs.co.uk is a website offering lots of free advice for dealing with bailiff enforcement. We also offer a helpline where we show you with inside knowledge on how to stop bailiffs and recover damages for enforcement impropriety. We also have solicitors that specialize in applying for redress for non-compliant bailiff action and have brought many successful claims putting money and belongings back where they belong. Until then, if in doubt, keep him out.